is the Greek Podcast Special Sunday Edition. Wake up with Greek and Ryan. That's it. How's that sound? Many girls have done that and been very disappointed. I hope you're not disappointed with this because you probably will be. Always sponsored by New York Prime. Make sure you go over there tonight and get a great steak and celebrate. Or Brayman Motor Cars, West Palm Beach and Jupiter. Great time to get a car and enjoy yourself and always treat yourself right. Because if you're happy, the people around you will be happy. Good morning, Mr. Ryan. It's Good great to see you. Now, we were thinking about going poolside, but we're at Prime Cigar. And again, uh, not dealing with a lot of people. Not, not, a, lot of, not, <laughs> not a lot of stuff going on here. Right? <laughs> Could you guys keep it down? <laughs> Don't have to die uh, when and keep it down. Right, right. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, my only concern with us being poolside or being, you know, is... The chlorine's is, good. No, the chlorine's good, and the sun is good, yeah. um, but me being on camera with a no shirt on is not good. Okay, well, we're going to do something like that. I mean, like you're, that. You know, you're a beautiful person. Yeah, we're going to do the guy from uh, Aquaman's body on you, and then we hung out. <laughs> so last week, uh, last Sunday, I, didn't know, I know I didn't tell you the story. We didn't talk. And uh, Ryan's the kind of guy, like, you go superhero, then Ryan. That's it. That's the way. Uh, any, any kind of problem, whatever's going on, I don't care. Whatever all, you need. Wait, all superheroes are above me, or just some? I would say 5 out of 10. All 5 right. out of 10. But I'm saying, like, you need a wrench, you call him. <laughs> you need to call the governor. You call him. I mean, you need whatever you need, he does. So last Sunday, I got to throw out the first pitch, which turned out to be the last pitch. <laughs> For the Coincidentally, <laughs> yeah. I've single-handedly destroyed all sports. <laughs> yeah. So if this happened football season, I'd have 50 dimes. I would have saved. <laughs> I got to tell you. So anyway, I, uh, it's with the Marlins and the Cardinals. I'm there, yada, yada, Greek. They're all nice to me. Walk in, walk down. I just go to step on the field. So, if you guys do listen to me, I appreciate it. Uh, 940 wins and real radio. And 940 wins, we're at home in the Marlins. So, last year I threw out the first pitch for the Marlins. So, I got a real Marlins jersey. It's nice. It says great. Right. I go to step on the field. goes, what are you doing? And, I mean, I'm on the field. She goes, you can't wear that. I go, what do you mean? She goes, it's with the Cardinals. She goes, you got to take oh, off. Oh, you were, at, you, were at, uh, you, were, you were up at Roger Dean. You were at the other one. Yeah, no, but I was with the Cardinals and the, right, the Marlins. Right, 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 right. But they right. said Marlins. So she goes, oh, no, walkie talkie, get down here. Blah, blah, oh, because, blah. The, because the Marlins were not the home field player at yeah. that moment. That's right. So she goes, you got to take off your shirt. <laughs> so I said to her, I said, okay, I said, give me a second. She goes, no, I mean right now. So I took it off. I had Tom Brady shirt on the GOAT. Uh, you can see the first pitch. A lot of people did check it out on Real Radio website, WZZR. I really appreciate it. And I threw an ace, but it was so funny. Like, they really weren't going to let me go on the field with the Marlins shirt. Right. And she goes, oh, it was a mistake. Something happened. She was Greek. You know, sorry. I said, I said but the email said Marlins. So I wrote. Right. But I said, what would you have done if I had no shirt? She was right. like, we would have found you one. So it was, <laughs> it was funny. They had a lot of stuff for the kids and March of Dimes. Right. Make a Wish. You know what I mean? It was really nice. And I was just hoping, like, the guy was going to, he was all the Make-A-Wish kids, come over here. So everybody walked away, and he looked at me. I went, bro, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that. <laughs> but it was crazy. Uh, but throwing out the first pitch, always fun, always exciting. Is, is, is it, do you have any anxiety? I've done it a lot. I had more anxiety, I would say not more. I had a lot when I threw at the Marlins Stadium. Oh, at Marlins Stadium. Yeah, last yeah, year yeah. I did. Because, again, it, you just think of, you yeah, can't even think about, I can't imagine like having Listen, to take a field goal with like see that that I would do. Yeah. So like so like you know if if I had to go out and let's say shoot a three ah. or kick a field goal yeah or something where where the the general uh ex, it, you know it would be expected or or accepted if you didn't make it chucking a ball over a plate if you, if you, if you like, people miss it, don't people miss it all, yeah. all the and time. They get, right. But I, I think it's just the anxiety, right? And, and again, if you're not playing a little, you know, I want to, but you I, know, I, you want to see a guy rip it with some heat. Like, yeah, you, like I was are, this close to throwing it behind my back because I, right, used to, you could do it, right? Yeah, right, I used yeah. to do it, but I said, if I don't do it, it's gonna look stupid, right? And last couple of years ago, there was a kid who threw it way over and it made the news, so I didn't want to do that. But when I was at Marlins Stadium, I gotta tell you, you know, we all are so critical of everybody and everything they do in sports and everything like that. That you can't imagine. Like I looked up at Marlins Stadium. I mean, it's Marlins. I mean, it's yeah, huge. And no, it's you, the, the anxiety. I can't imagine ninth inning World Series yeah. or kicking a thing and saying to myself, "Oh my God!" Like the field goal kicker. I can't imagine when they keep calling timeout. He's got to be like, right. "Are you frigging right. kidding me?" Right. It's like trying to get into an orgy, and you're next to it. You're like, "Come on, <laughs> put me in, put me in. Let me just kick it." Right. The like, stuff's wearing off. Or laying up that home run years ago. There was a pitcher. And this is going back in the 
I think it was the 70s. I forget his name off the top of my hand. He let up a big home run. The Red Sox and Angels. I think it was the Bobby Gritch. Um, it wasn't Bobby Gritch. It was somebody else. It was Henderson for the Red Sox, for people listening. And Donnie Moore. And he committed suicide. Like two months later. No, because he because the anxiety. He and, just he like, let up the home run. No, it's like lost. it's like Scott, you know, like Scott Norwood. Where's you know where? Yeah, yeah. He's he he was never heard from ever again. Yeah. But the thing about most sports that have a clock, right? You got to remember, almost every sport has a clock except baseball. Oh yeah. It's the only sport oh, yeah. where the where the pitcher actually controls the oh, yeah. pace. Yeah. Of the game, and yeah. people forget that. Oh, yeah. Basketball clock, football yeah. clock, yeah. hockey clock, yeah. soccer clock. Yeah. Every freaking sport. Well, the except majors. Cricket. Yeah. Well, tennis you know? and golf. It's your thing. Oh, right. Well, I mean, yeah. but 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 even in well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but but those are like those are you know those are individual sports. Yeah. Tennis is a yeah. is an individual sport. Golf. I'm talking about team sports, but but if you think about it, I mean, other than like cricket, maybe some other sports that we don't really watch. You know, baseball is one of those sports that's never had a clock. No, yeah, one's, ever, no one's ever walked out to a pitcher's mound and be like, dude, you got to hurry up. Like, well, you, they, they do it, they, but they, they, there's, an, there's an unwritten sure. rule yeah, yeah. about keeping the pace. Of course. But, you it's, know, like, it's crazy, though. But like I said, like, if you've never been there, and 99.9 .9 have never been there, yeah. you don't realize anxiety. Like I said, people are nervous for a first pitch. You're on a radio station, local, you know, and people get nervous. They're like, oh, whatever. But imagine well. that if you did that and the anxiety you have. Again, public speaking. Right. People flip out. Yeah. I mean, you're very good at yeah, it. Yeah, I, like, I actually like public speaking. But, I, but I, yeah. I, I agree. I hear you. you know, yeah. it's, people, get, people get anxiety about, you know, things that, that if you can normalize. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's the ability to, to normalize the situation in your head and say, is this really worth it? Being worried about. Now you do a lot of public speaking, and well, I, some, I mean, yeah, yeah, but enough. Yeah, yeah, I do a bunch. Okay, and uh, do you go to that old rule? I started with me years ago in college, where you single out one person, or no? Are you you do you stop um, it? You know, it's funny. So depending on how big the crowd is and what we're actually talking about, um, and because you, you've much, spoken in front of two fifty, three hundred guys. Oh, I've spoken in front of fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I've spoken huge. over yeah, a thousand yeah, a bunch yeah. of times. Um, uh, especially you know when it comes to like you know you know the teaching stuff, but but. Um, no, you know, I, what I try to do is I try to look out at the crowd and I try to see, you know, I try to gauge what the actual engagement is, right? Yeah. So when I walk up there, you know, if a lot of people are looking down or a lot of people look like they're just like, oh, God, I got to speed speaker. up. I gotta, you know, I'll speed stuff up. I'll make jokes, whatever. I'll, I'll pick people out of me. I, I, I've told this joke a couple of times. I went, I was speaking at a, at a municipal engineers or municipal field operations um, continuing education seminar for stormwater management. Oh God! Right? So I walk into this like double tree hotel and convention center, and I, I, I drive into the parking lot. I got my jacket on. I have the presentation ready. You know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a 50 minute presentation. And I walk in the parking lot, and there are not exaggerating 700 white. Ford F-150 municipal vehicles. Oh, my like, God. Like, can you imagine walking back out to that parking lot yeah. and being like, where did I park? I, 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 I need I, to park. There was, it, was, it was my car yeah. and, then, and then what looked like something out of, like, Disney where oh, yeah. everything was the exact same car. So I walk up onto the stage and I'm looking and these people are like, they don't want to be there. Yeah. And I, and I go, I go uh, some, uh, whoever's got the white Ford F-150, you left your lights on. Oh, and they all kind of laugh. Yeah, because, they, because they saw, you know, so yeah. you got to break the ice and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, no, you shouldn't be, ang you know, you shouldn't be anxious about, about anything that ain't going to kill you. You know, I mean, that's yeah. basically it. Yeah, but and, people are. Yeah. And that's the thing. But it's, but it's, it's, har it's, it's not harnessing. It's, it's, it's rationalizing things. Like I say to my wife, I have this, I have a live or die theory, right? Like, like literally. Like, she's afraid to fly in airplanes. Yeah. I go, babe, I go, if we don't crash, I got nothing to worry about. Yeah. And if we crash, I got nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah. So why worry? Like, just to, you know. Well, I think for her, she's thinking, you know, you have the children. A lot of people, as they get older, they don't want to separate. But control your controllables, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, but again, what you're, what you're saying and what you're doing is, again, you're making it you. And it's not, most people can't. What you have in that ingredient of confidence, which it comes from, and not it's doing rationality, it. I think. I, I, people still worry. They yeah. always say one of the things. Oh, no, that, by the way, I'm not saying I don't worry. I got three. I have three teenage daughters. Of course, daughters. but Believe I'm saying me, you're I not going to stop. But the two of the things that I love that I hear people is anything bad happens, it happened for a reason, right? No, it didn't. I mean, if it's right. bad, it didn't. Well, I mean, if I win the lottery, that's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, but I'm saying, and the other thing is, don't worry about things you can't control. People say it all the time. To me, that's but people do. Well, there's a difference. There's a difference between don't worry about things you can't control. 
and what I said before, which is control your controllables. And control your controllables is something that we say all the time in business. You have to you have to put yourself into situations, and you have to create scenarios and situations where you have some control over the potential outcomes. Yeah. If you walk into a room, yeah. you know, and I thought I'm presenting to a bunch of stormwater engineers and I walk into the porn convention by accident, yeah. uh, you know, I'm just in the wrong spot. Like, yeah. I can control whether or not I walk out and find a new room. You know, so it's, it's you gotta, you have to make sure you put yourself in situations where you have some expectation of the outcome. Right? Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, but, but you yeah, know, listen, don't get me wrong, man. I, uh, I, was, I was out on a boat with uh, a big customer yeah. three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, I've been on. I've literally been on. I lived. I mean, I've, I've been a boater my entire life since I'm yeah. four years old. And we yeah. were we were poor, but we had a boat yeah. in Jersey. I mean, on Lake Apacon. I'm like a bag. I grew up on yeah. boats. I mean, you know, you guys know Lake Apacon, right? He's I mean, a data chicken, you know, Lake Apacon. Right. <laughs> right. The crazy. water was glowing green. And they had the <laughs> chief thing on the thing, Lake Apacon. Welcome, exactly. <laughs> summer of '26. Right, <laughs> largest lake in New Jersey. Oh, yeah. big deal. <laughs> yeah. Right, but you know, I mean, I grew up on. I know boats. I come in the Boynton Inlet. Yeah. And I know that inlet. It's snotty. Yeah. And I had this guy on the boat me instead, and and and, oh. and I didn't think to say to him, hold on for a couple of minutes. This inlet's nasty. Mean, we were, meaning choppy. It's nasty. It's a stupid design. I'm sorry, City of Boynton Beach, but that inlet is horrible. Okay, so for people who yeah, don't know, because I don't. Choppy. Okay, that's what I'm saying. What's the word nasty? Not only mean? is it wicked current running yeah. through there, but you come in on an angle, you make a bend, it narrows. The current's nasty. Big boats are powering through there, and so what happens is you got the current, you got the narrowness, you got you don't have a lot of room to you know to to, to deal with error, so you kind of just power through it, and you know and you know what you're dealing with. Did he fall? There's two big boats in front of me, and this dude who is who's down from Chicago, yeah. you know, instead of me saying hold on because I have to pay attention to sure. what's going on. I should have managed him better. And he fell. And I, dude, I almost launched him off the boat. Really? Oh, he was. I, I looked over and his body was over the boat and his legs were in the air. Oh! And I grabbed him. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No, so I, you know, so again, you know, you're going to be in situations that you have to manage ahead of time and think about things. I, he was fine. He lost his glasses. Yeah. I took him over to two Georges, got him drunk, and it was fine. You know, nice. <laughs> it is the Greek. It is Ryan. It is the Greek podcast outside Sunday morning. What? That's what it I'm talking nice about. It's beautiful. Out. Postcard, man. Gorgeous. South Florida is where people want to be. Always sponsored by New York Prime. Get over there today for dinner. Have a great time. Celebrate being alive. Take out your girlfriend, your mistress, your bookmaker. Who right now is going to be kissing your ass. <laughs> I believe me when I tell you. Lizards and snowflakes. Hey, what, are you you what are you betting on? That's right. Uh, always sponsored by Brayman Motor Cars. West Palm Beach and Jupiter. Great time to buy a new car, and you'll get a great deal. We'll be back in a couple of seconds. It is the Greek. It is Ryan from Prime Cigar. Puff, puff, baby. Cause it and crystal. We'll be back. Puff. Peace. I shopped around to replace my Lexus and fell in love with a great looking BMW at Brayman Motor Cars. And get this. We interrupt this commercial for an exciting announcement. Brayman BMW has just received the all new 2 Series Grand Coupe. Starting at only 37.5. Come now for a test drive. We now return you to your regularly scheduled commercial. What are you waiting for? Purchase your new BMW at Brayman and you are in the club. Brayman's Love What You Drive sales event is happening now. BraymanBMW.com. It's a Greek podcast Sunday morning. Hope you're having a great day. Great day to be in South Florida. Weather is perfect. We're watching the Jets fly in, which is unbelievable. Yeah, ETS. Oh, oh my God! Oh, it's actual Jets. Oh, no, actual Jets. Oh, I thought it was the Jets. <laughs> uh, Ryan, my boy, always here. Thank Don't God. We do the schedule around Ryan. When Ryan says he could come. That's it. He's like, I mean, forget it. He's like, he's the man. That's it. We're here, superhero. I'm the Greek. Don't forget, we're sponsored by New York Prime and Brayman Motor Cars of West Palm Beach and Jupiter. So we got some t situations going on right now. We don't want to get into it, but I got a buddy of mine who's having a little hard time with his job. So says to his girlfriend, now take this at a straight level. Not everything, not everything, but he's going to put her on a camera to do some stuff. Not crazy things. It could be brushing her teeth. It could be watching TV. And one out of 10 shots, he said, is going to be something sexy, you know, where she might be naked. She might be doing something. You know, he's not telling you, but it's one of ten. He's launched it about two weeks ago, and he said he's doing very well. He said, you, ma you can't imagine the people that would just sign up 
to, for, you know, they hear something and they do that. Right. Now, I said to him, you know, dating a girl is different than your wife, obviously. You know what I mean? And he goes, you know, we're going 50-50. I said, oh, that's nice of you. 50-50. She's doing all the work and taking half the money. Yeah, that's it. He goes, it was my idea. Now, in crazy times, people come up with crazy stuff. But to me, that's a little bizarre. I said, you could be launching a star. So hold on. So he created a, a, script, a subscription site yeah. where people pay yeah, to watch her, n- knowing that she's going to be just doing regular everyday stuff nine out of ten times. But one time it could then, be something right. like very provocative. It's it like could, like when we used to get the the uh, the um, boxes of cereal, and and yeah. one box of cereal had the die cast metal yeah. car, yeah. but the other nine hundred thousand of them had the plastic piece of garbage. Yeah, like he said that one of the things she was doing yoga the other day, and a bikini. You know, it got a ton of hits. I mean, and he said there's been some stuff, though. It's been crazy. Uh, but he said it's doing well. But, you know, it's funny. Like, YouTubers, what people watch. Like, when I see a video, like yesterday I saw a very nice video. I don't know if you saw it. It was the Italian Air Force, all right? And they flew across Italy in red, green, and, green white. and white. right. And they had the, the opera singer. Uh, uh, Bocelli? Yeah, in right. the background. Oh, yeah. Playing. Nice. Now, I, and, I, and I'm not a guy to YouTube or watch stuff, but I, I, was, in, I was like, wow, it was only it, two minutes. Was, it, was this like a live thing for morale, or was it was it this was a recorded segment that you just happened to be watching? I just saw it. I don't know what okay. it was. It might have been a recent couple of weeks. Sounds nice. Yeah, but what they were doing. But, I mean, check it out. I thought it was cool. Yeah. And for me, I never watched a YouTube video, but it was like two minutes. The planes, and, you know, it was eight planes, jets, right, and then right, he right. was in the background singing like, hey, stay calm, be positive. Okay. You know what I mean? All that. Something right. they did. Don't but worry, I thought it was happy. intriguing. But I mean, I don't, I'm not a video guy, but sometimes when I see videos that get 2 million views, 3 million views, there's nothing in them and I'm shocked. My daughters this past week introduced me to this thing called TikTok. TikTok. Dude, I don't get it. Yeah. And they're showing me these videos of, of kids their age and my 12 year old daughter is like, look, this one got 1.9 million views. Yeah. I go... It, it's for what? It's what nothing. They they it's do. just a. It's just a backtrack of music, and they're and dancing. Dancing. One yeah. guy was opening up a soda can, and it, and it shot up, and then it went backward, and like the, I go. But that was his point. It, right. it, like it's not that you watch enjoy. anything. Also, people are very bored. They got nothing on. Bored. They're on their phones considerably. Dude, put your dog on a leash and go for a walk. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Put on your headphones and listen to some, like, Bad Company, Steppenwolf, like, good old quality, school. old school, Almond Brothers, get, I mean, like, what would be like, a worse, get outside. What would be a worse crisis in the world if we go through what we're going through now, or Apple and everybody said everybody's phone is gone? <laughs> No phones. I'd be walking around with my boombox, maybe. No phones. My wife saves everything. I guarantee you somewhere in my garage there. is like a tape player. There's no phones. Right. Uh, sorry, there's no By phones. By the way, that like, like it, you know, it was funny. We were driving down the street. I was driving back from Miami. I was down in Miami on Friday. So I'm driving back from Miami, and I'm listening, because I don't want to listen to the news anymore. I mean, yeah. I, mean I mean, I listen to it, obviously. I got a responsible. Yeah. I got, you know... You know, but but I was trying to just find something. So I found some. I think I was listening to like NPR. Yeah. Like, like right? and they were talking about um, how there is this NASA was talking about an increase of solar flares, and I'm like, uh, like, can I just find a, like a like a comedian station That's or something? It. I'm like, they're like, oh, yeah. they're like, they're like, you know, the the chances of a solar flare knocking out our electrical grid have increased from one in eighty nine bajillion to yeah. two in eight. Like, and they're like. I'm, I'm amazed a, by a lot of these on. people. It's like these uh, mediums who, f- you know, they, they have millions of people following. Oh, right, right. Mrs. Chloe. Uh, and yeah, all or that something like that. I'm like, I'm shocked, but people do. And the loyalty. You know who's not stopping this week? Joel Osteen. Joel said, I'm hot. <laughs> We're protected. Yeah. He's not stopping that money, Jake. Well, one, one, one of the guys, I don't, I don't know which one. I don't want to get into, like, uh, yeah. but some evangelist got, like, jacked up for uh, for selling holy water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that was the guy who's always been in trouble. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, years ago. Like, yeah, not yeah, Jim yeah. Baker, but one of yeah, the guys. Yeah, it was. It was Jim Baker. It was Jim Baker, yeah. He's but he was on, a, and it was on a, a side street in Hialeah with a tent. <laughs> and give me a call. Right. Yeah, I got right. this. It's crazy. Yeah, Joel's not stopping today. Because I'm not stopping. I'm you know what? Right. Look, here's the, so so we, we're kind of dancing around hysteria. Yeah. Let's just get something square. Wash your hands. Give you know. Be outside. Enjoy life. Yeah. Be patient. Be cautious. Be smart. You know. Temper yourself. Yeah. But don't like. 
Don't be chicken little. Don't run around until the sky is falling. No. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. That's a great, that's, I, 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 you should buy that for me in diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Yeah, I, mean, it's, I it's, would love it. Then I can sell it if things are bad. It's true. I mean, that's, true. you're right. But I mean, again, the biggest muscle you have, I say it every day, is your brain. It's how you look at your day every day. Yeah. My dad used to always drill in my head since I was a little kid. You have no problems. A problem is when a doctor says you got cancer or leukemia. You have inconveniences, which right. are so unbelievable. Yeah. Like maybe Neiman Marcus isn't going to open up as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I can't find a parking spot on Fifth Avenue. I got to walk all the way over from Lex. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went down to Miami, and uh, this is a great story about when you tell somebody something and they're not listening or they can't conceive it or in their mind. Like, what? So I went to the Super Bowl, and I told a story where I came out of the east side of the stadium by the turnpike. Now, uh -huh. where if you go, if you're familiar with Dolphin Stadium, where the turnpike entrance is, and I had to walk around the stadium and about six miles to iHeart Miami. So I told the Russian princess, who AKA is my wife, this story many times. So last week, I take her down to Miami. We, we, we were going down for the day, and we had to stop by iHeart Miami to pick up some stuff. And I said, hey, here's where I, I got out, and right. this is where I walk. Now, the walk took us two and a half hours. Right. We also had to jump a fence. Uh, we walked through the sewer system. Oh, I mean, it was bizarre. <laughs> Me and my four fr three friends, they were holding on to my belt buckle. My one buddy was just flipping out. I mean, he was getting anxiety. We got pulled over. The cops came over, and the guy goes, hey, from beyond this point, we walked past Caldor Racetrack. I mean, this was, it was like oh, a... Oh, you were in Nowheresville. Yeah, it was about a six-mile walk. Oh, I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I told her the story, she was like, what's the big deal? Right. Because she goes, what the hell took so long? I said... We had to walk. So when I showed her this, she goes, I would have never done that. I would have called Uber and just went home, and the next day got my car. I said, that's nice. I don't think like that. Right. And there was no way to get an Uber into the Super Bowl at that yeah, point. Yeah. I, no, I probably could have got an Uber to you go could, home. You could, have, you could have walked somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And right. got an Uber. And got an Uber to get to. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it was just bizarre. But when she heard the story and she saw it, she was, I would have, I would have left a car. And yeah, it's nice. 300 bucks to go back the next day. It's the longest walk I ever had. And then, you've never been to iHeart Miami, I'll bring you down. There's a long road, I mean, it's like a mile to the iHeart building. It's huge, and it's like got all these beautiful lights. Purple, blue, and like, it was pitch black. It was like 11.30. And like, seeing the lights, it was like in the desert, seeing the world. Oh my God. <laughs> like seeing the palm trees yeah, in the yeah. distance. And my buddy's like, oh my God, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my brother says this as a therapist in psychology for years that roles with your friends and your family doesn't change. They don't change. He goes, you'd be surprised. He goes, once in a while, like everything, it will. I had my one buddy who was, I remember where he played ball. He was always a little chunky and he couldn't do things and he always would grab me and go, Greek, look, don't do that. Like, don't jump over that fence. I can't do that. So this time. Right. So we're, he was one of the guys at the Super Bowl. So he grabs me. I said, look, we got this one pot, spot. We're going to go under 95. We got to jump over this this like, a, like a culvert barrier. And no, no, it was go. just a little fence. Right. It wasn't high, but we couldn't get over it. Right, Because right. we had to go over the sewer systems because we couldn't go in the street because the buses <laughs> where, were coming. Where the hell were you? <laughs> I'm telling you, I was showing you. We walked past Caldor, oh and then once we did it, when we went under there, there were the roads were going. All the, you know how many buses were flying? Oh, it was crazy. There wasn't an inch. Oh, because, yeah, so you couldn't walk on the shoulder of the road. You there could, was no shoulder. Yeah, you get your life in your hands. Yeah, right. so we walked on the other side of right. the rail. But right, once right. we got to the end of the square, it was. There was no earth left. No, there was a little fence. We right. had to jump it. We got through the gas station. So I look at him. He goes, gee, I can't do it. I said, dude, you have to do it. I said, you can't. I gotta, oh, I, there's nothing I can do. He goes, how about if you leave me here and then come get me when you come back? <laughs> I'm like, no. I said, I had days of like we were 12. Jump so, your so, like, Sneak it. There was, and I know you'll notice. This is why I love you. When I was a kid, Route 280. Do you remember it? Sure, of course. Okay, Route 280 was being made. So yeah. we used to go, and they used to have the train tracks, and we used to sneak over the fence to see them do it, and they would blow right. up the mountain. It was, it was cool. Yeah, I lived there. Yeah, yeah. Morris County. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were blowing the mountains up, and we right. said there was always a fence, and he goes, and now he's like 48. He goes, I couldn't do it at 12. <laughs> I can't do it at now. That's a big fence. <laughs> and, and I thought of my brother. I said, it hasn't changed. We finally got him over the fence. It was great, and it was an unbelievable situation. But I got to tell you, but when That's she funny. saw it, she was like, I would have never walked that. What's wrong with you? And see, I thought I did the good thing. Like, I, well, I'm not going to blow 300 bucks. Right. Then I, I'm home, but I'm on my car. 
Right. She was, I would have got a ride from somebody the next day. Like, I go, I'm not thinking that. Yeah. You know, but it was so bizarre. You know, you, you, you mentioned a second ago that we have our roles in life. You yeah. Know? And, it, and it's true. I mean, you got leaders, you got, you got support staff, you got followers, you got people who just want to, you know, make it through the next day. And, and you know, and you're right. I mean, you just, you know, you are who you are. Yep. And and sometimes it takes someone to push you out of your comfort zone, and yeah, and it's. Uh, it's but roles yeah. don't change, especially no. family. No. And I also think with siblings, like I look at my uh, the Russian princes with their kids, and I think the boy and the girl. I just think the role will be the right. same. I look at me and my brother the same today than we were kids. So my 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 wife, my uh, my princess of of thirty years, um, we were having a discussion the other day about responsibility and how we're going to handle the kids the school's closed everything's closed what yeah. are we going to do i gotta work and i got you know i got businesses and and uh and i said to her i go you know i go why don't you know you're so nonchalant about everything like you like no. you're not like i'm making all these plans and i'm and i need you to like be on my team right now so yeah. we can just be strategic and she goes, you'll just take care. You'll take care of everything. That's right. That's your wife. She goes, she goes, you'll take care of everything. I go, yeah. I go, when do I get someone to say, honey, it'll be okay? She goes, no. It's always okay. You'll take care of everything. That's right. That's right. your role. So you know what? That's his Take role. care of your people. That's Love it. your family. Wash your hands. Separate a little bit. I love this guy. When we showed up today, we didn't shake hands. No. We just know we love each other. That's it. It's good, man. That's it. Uh, and last week, I was at his birthday. Last minute invite, by the way. Eight people. <laughs> last minute invite. I got the text. I was looking at We got to make some chair call, Greg. <laughs> I was like, am I getting invited? I'm like, Greg, you just went in. I brought in. Happy birthday again. Thank you, bro. Good luck. Good health. Thank you. It is Greek. It is Ryan. Always want to thank New York Prime. Obviously, best place to get steak. You can go to New York Prime and get to go, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They'll make it to go. They got I mean, really I, nice I, bags. Oh, I've had it. So if you don't want to go to the restaurant, make get a phone call. Eat good steak. That's right. And also, Brayman Motor Cars, West Palm Beach, and Jupiter. Next new car. That's where it should be. It's great to treat yourself right and be there and stay in your lane. Don't worry about things. See you next week. Peace. So I shopped around to replace my Audi and fell in love with a great looking BMW at Brayman Motor Cars. And get this. We interrupt this commercial for an exciting announcement. Brayman BMW has just received the all new two series Grand Coupe starting at only 37.5. Come now for a test drive. We now return you to your regularly scheduled commercial. Purchase a new BMW at Brayman and you're in the club. Visit Brayman BMW now for exceptional offers during our Love What You Drive sales event. BraymanBMW.com.